Good evening and welcome to this edition of Vantage Point. We're pleased to sort of bring you this exercise because we are in a season where we hear a lot about culture and heritage and, and Creole things and other things related to who we think we are. In this series, we are continuing our examination of what is this culture thing we celebrate anyhow. And this evening's program will look at the aspect of our culture called language, languages. Many of you don't know that we have four languages in Dominica. We have in studio with us this evening persons who are exponents, practitioners, teachers, trainers in at least three of those. We have with me here, with, we have Margaret James. Margaret is from the village of Marigat. Margaret used to run the program, host the program Afuawi on DBS for, for many, many years. Thank you so much for coming, Margaret. Then we have in the center, we have Mr. Felix Henderson, who needs absolutely no introduction. Oh, my finger. <laughs> in the afternoon, um, people, you know, um, people know Felix on DBS radio, know Felix in other ways, but, but also Felix, most people probably might not remember you were the first chairperson of the Creole Committee in, of Dominica, and we may have a little time to talk a little bit about that. But certainly from the point of view of practicing the language and keeping it alive, you have continued to, to play a part. And over to the extreme left is somebody who probably as well needs very little introduction, Ian Jacko Jackson, who is an English teacher. A lot of people probably don't know that at, at SMP, yeah, at SMA. SMA, but also is a writer, a poet, a lyricist, um, also known in the Calypso world. And so a practitioner of English, of all levels and types of English. So here we have three of those persons who with us are going to explore this issue of language in the context of our culture as Dominicans, as Caribbean people of African descent. What is this thing we are celebrating, this culture thing, and more specifically tonight, what about our languages? Where we are with them, where are they with us? We'll be right back for that conversation after a few words from the sponsors who are helping to make this edition of Vantage Point possible. We'll be right back. Welcome back uh, to this edition of Vantage Point where we are looking at the second aspect of our culture and asking the question, as I said earlier, what is this culture we are celebrating in here? And this, in this edition, we are, we are talking about language. And, um, you know, I'm so fascinated by the language of Kokoi because, number one, I don't know how to speak it. Although as a little boy, I spent vacation in Marigat quite a lot. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I, I always considered it a really kind of a foreign language. Yeah, I was a little boy from Roso, but not understanding what anybody else was saying. What is Kokoi? Where does it come from? Who uses it? Kokoi is definitely a language. Most people call it bad English. Mm -hmm. I remember when we were children, we were forbidden to speak Kokoi. Kokoi came from the Kokoi was brought to Dominica for the slaves. Mm -hmm. These slaves came from Antigua, St. Kitts and Monstrat. Okay. And uh, they lived in Marigot and Wesley first. And we found out that most of these slaves were brought to the Caribbean from the west coast. Of Africa? Of Africa. Okay. Mm -hmm. Senegal, right across to Nigeria. Mm -hmm and they brought this language along with them. Now, we also have a mixture of the um, Kokoi and the Quail. But before that, the, the Kokoi, why is it called Kokoi? What's the meaning of that word? The meaning, I don't know, the name originated um, mostly be because people thought it was a difficult language mm -hmm. to understand because okay. you know, the kokoi, as we call it, mm -hmm. people don't like it, they say it's hard to eat and whatever. So I guess because of that... Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> it's hard to eat. <laughs> it's hard to eat. So I guess it was hard to understand and hard to speak. Speak as well. Uh -huh. So um, they named it kokoi. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay. And, y and you were saying that it somehow has got intertwined with the yes. Creole, the, the, what we call in, patois. In the village of Woodford Hill, for instance. Mm -hmm. 
the slaves on the estate came from both French backgrounds and English backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And um, you would have the, the slaves on the English farm, really, not, not backgrounds, but um, the slaves that came from Antigua, Monstrat, and St. Kitts, they didn't know any patois, okay. any um, Crayola. So they would speak their languages. And now you had the slaves that came from the French estates. And they intermingled with each other. And uh, you would hear words like mash chef, for example. The French knew chef as chief. And uh, those that came from the English plantations used to say massa. Mm -hmm. So you hear the word mash chef so was designed, was um, derived from that. Mm -hmm. From that um, from that language, so the the languages were intertwined. And if you go to Woodford Hill now, you find some sp people speak the Kokoi differently from those in Marigot and yes, Wesley. Uh -huh. But it's understandable, of course. It's understandable, mm -hmm. but Kokoi is indeed a language. Mm -hmm. People would say that um, oh, don't speak um, Kokoi. That is bad English. We were forbidden to speak it mm -hmm. at home and at school. However, even in Marigot. Even in Marigot. Mm -hmm. However, when we met at recess time or playing, you know, we would speak our oh, Kokoi when mm -hmm. we meet to give jokes and whatever. What would you be saying in Kokoi to your friend uh, you met at recess time, for you example? You don't hear that now. <laughs> 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 you don't yeah. hear what happened there, Mr. Joseph Newton Kitchen Bondong, you know. That was, um, um, we had that for writing. Uh -huh. We got it to write, you know, before they used to give us writing, so we'd have those little, little quotations, you know, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. current events of the day, mm -hmm. we would have the news as writing. So when we reach, we would, we would talk anything. We would just talk in our kokoi, but we, we, we were not allowed to speak it to, to the older people. It's interesting in that little kokoi piece you gave us, I heard the na, which <laughs> I associate with the French Creole, yes. you know? So, so you, actually what you said earlier is already mm -hmm. evident in, the, in how mm -hmm. you speak the language, mm -hmm. yes. Or we, sometimes it ends with we. Mm -hmm. I go in there, we, me go there, we. Okay, mm -hmm. all, right, all right. Is Kokoi alive and well? In, in Kokoi is alive and well in the hearts of the older folks. Okay. But the younger children that are assigned to the television and to the internet and um, the world at large, mm -hmm. they do not know any Kokoi. But mm -hmm. in our day it was pure, it was pure because we didn't, we didn't have any television. All we had was the radio okay. with one or two stations. So all we had was ourselves, the Kokoi, our languages, our culture, mm -hmm. although it wasn't celebrated as it is today. Okay. But on moonlight nights, for example, we would sit in groups Neighbors would gather together, give um, Nancy's story, we would call it, in, in Kokoi. Kokoi. Okay. Mm. Let's, let's talk to Felix, because Felix has, over the years, Felix, you're from Granby, right? Yes, from Granby, Originally. South City Granby. South City yes. Granby. Yes. Uh, that, was, that was known also as a Creole-speaking, a Patois-speaking yes. community. Mm -hmm. Um, but ironically, growing up, I couldn't speak Creole. You <laughs> no, th and this is a revelation. <laughs> <laughs> Until I was about 17 years, I can just tell you briefly, yeah. I was in the village one day and there was this lady speaking to me, or speaking about something, and I asked her, but, but, but what, 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 what do you mean by that, mm -hmm. what you said in, in, in Creole? Mm -hmm. She said, what do I mean by that? Uh, Sack whatever, uh -huh. Kupawi, so, uh -huh. you know, and uh -huh. she gave me what we call a one rack attack. Uh -huh. And I really felt bad among people, you know, and I said, oh, okay, that's all right. I'm going to learn to speak Creole. So that I was, was I was 17 years, and, and at 20 years, I was on DBS radio. I could how understand you, uh, Creole. How did you learn to speak it then? How did I learn to speak Creole? I could understand it. Your mother would tell you, go to the shop yeah. and uh, get, see, whatever, come in, you know. They speak to you in Creole, but you had to respond in English. You know, okay. it was forbidden to speak Creole to your mother. Even in Granby? Yes, in Granby, because you see, what happened, you know, of course, Creole was associated with poor and, uh, you know, country folk mm -hmm. and, you know, but what happened our parents, they wanted something, what they said was better for their children. Mm -hmm. Yes, I didn't go to school and I, I, I didn't do anything well, but I wanted my, I want my son, I want my daughter to do something better. 
I wanted an education for my child. You and that know? meant speaking English. That means speaking in English. Mm -hmm. And of course, they mm -hmm. were all brainwashed by what was happening around. Mm -hmm. You know, Creole, you know, see, pour mon qui pauvre, mon qui pani, education, mm -hmm. that kind of thing, you know. So they want you to speak uh, English and not Creole. I, but that's all they could speak, though. Without telling us your age, mm -hmm. as you look back on it now, mm -hmm. you know, uh, from 17 years, 20 years, mm -hmm. What, what has Creole come to mean to you, Felix, and, and, and as you see, to Dominica? Is it where it should be? Yeah, is it a language? Is it, yeah, yeah. is it part of us? First of all, let me say, I have no problem telling you my age. <laughs> Most people do, why? I ain't got a problem because uh, I'm so thankful to God for allowing me to see what I've seen. You know, uh, I'm 56. And, uh, You're a young boy. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I was in the days when we played uh, nuts, when we, you know, drove a truck or, or, or local trucks or, or, or toys, we, you know, and all of those things, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the, the, the goo glue and mm -hmm. uh, all of the stuff, you know, we did as boys, we were going playing in the river. I saw all of that and I was privileged to see that at the same time, I'm in the age of computers, yes. you know, so two different generations. That's so right. I, I'm thankful to God. and. Uh, I, I've seen so much and I've been able, uh, I'm so blessed, thank God, you know, so I ain't got a problem saying my age, you know, but the, the question was, the question was, the Korean uh, language, you know, yeah. and, and I'm telling you, as you look back on it, oh, yes, you I'm know, w w what's the significance of it for you personally, how, how, how has it affected your life, and, and a question for you specifically, how have you affected Creole in Dominica? Uh -huh. How have I affected Creole in Dominica? How has it affected my life? First of all, I went to DBS not even to speak Creole. Mm -hmm. I went to DBS because I love to read and I love to write. Okay. And there was this opening and I came to DBS among many other people. I remember as if it was yesterday when I walked in there. And then I was doing English news. I actually read news in Creole one t in English one time. Okay. Uh, although I, I, I shot it so loud, then it's just it's a taking off the air. <laughs> 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 I thought I had to bring my voice, I had to, you know, <laughs> to, to talk my to voice so people in Delhi could hear me in La Plaine, in St. <laughs> Thomas, you know. <laughs> 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 yeah, but then I'm um, Tim Dura at the time, of, of course, before that, yeah. you know, there was that whole rebirth of our, 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 our thing, you know, our culture, Le Blanc. Yeah. Under Le Blanc. Yeah. Under yes. Le Blanc. Mm -hmm. And thing. I wouldn't go f far back and talk about how Creole came to the Eastern mm -hmm. Caribbean. I think we, that, that's well documented, that's well the documented. sleeps and all of that. And she spoke a little bit about that a while ago in Kokoya, you know. And so Dennis Joseph wanted Creole on the radio. Okay. You had a Frampton at the time and, and, and Tim Dura yeah. doing their little stuff, you know. And Frampton had a, that popular program called New Man with a guy called Thomas. When I came in 77, mm -hmm. I, I, I joined the program and we were having fun. Uh, but, but, but we have to remember too, people did not want to hear Creole on the radio. Uh -huh. And that was a challenge for Dennis Joseph. Mm -hmm. That was a challenge that he had. But then there was something new happening in Dominica at the time. There was the Kadas music. Okay. And so people were infused by Kadas. People were just excited about Kadas, Gordon Henderson and the other guys. And they wanted to hear the songs on the radio. At the same time, they don't want to hear Creole. Some people, of course, you know, the bourgeoisie. So that was an interesting blah, blah, blah. You know, and that was a nice opening mm -hmm, for Creole. Mm -hmm. And this is what Dennis Joseph Frampton did. They used this, the music together with jokes, like Cope Lape, Cope Tic, and all those kind of things. And that was a, magn a, 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 a very popular popular program in those days. Mm -hmm. But then he wanted something more. Dominica, as you know, uh, a young developing nation looking to independence and DBS really the national broadcaster. Of course, DBS alone at the time. Mm -hmm. And so we had a responsibility to educate our people. Young, young nation, people hadn't heard um, their voices in Creole on radio before. Yes, they would hear English. Once in a while, people like um, Riviere, Mr. Riviere, he had a GS program and would say, um, tot, um, ma, ma tat whatever, mm -hmm. auntie whatever and mm -hmm. call different names a little bit in Creole right. yeah but then a real uh, what I would say positive program not that anything else was negative but a program mm -hmm. here we looked at issues you know you know is it, is it because people didn't see it as a language people but saw of it as a they didn't see it as a language and uh -huh. this as I said country bookie okay mm -hmm. you know for country bookie for 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 poor so it was just people. A, a brand of yes, a certain you know, person rather yeah. than yeah, but what I, I think what I, you asked me also what I brought to Creole, yes. and I thank God for that, thank God for the talent he gave me. I think it's the way I speak Creole. Mm -hmm. I tell you, you know, I, I think it's a, not, I think it is a language, a syntax, an orthography, a writing system. I'm proud to be part of that, you know. 
But then it's the way I, I suppose I spoke the Creole, not just because you can speak a kind of a, 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 a loud out Creole. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of Creole, and uh, it, it is a very expressive language. When I read news, I read news like I read news on television or on radio. You know that voice, that, you, you know, like news. Yes. You know, I'm not just giving you a story when I read news. I read news like new, news. Mm -hmm. And so then it shows you thoughts, and many people heard me in '77. They thought that was exciting, okay. and so they wanted something more. And they spoke about a program called Experience. Yes, Creola, and for the first time mm -hmm. on radio, mm -hmm. Dominic and ordinary people could hear themselves, farmers uh, and fishermen, mm -hmm. you know, housewives, could hear themselves on the radio before all they heard was the minister, all they heard were doctors and lawyers, and, and remember too, they are professionals in their own rights. You know, and they could hear themselves on the radio, and they, uh, it was just like an exciting time on DBS at the time. Okay, okay. And do you remember some of the early reactions to Experience Creole? I mean, were there still some resistance? Yeah, how did it express itself, and how did you overcome that? Yes, uh, most people would call the manager, but yeah. uh, I would never get that kind of thing. All I get, I would say, was b the positive remarks, you know, because we were beginning to touch people's lives, uh -huh. you know, in, uh, everywhere at okay. 2 o'clock. Uh, it was like an assembly. It is a call to order at two o'clock, uh, and here it was Creole people from all over Dominica, yeah. and not only Dominica in Saint Lucia, in Martinique, and Guadeloupe. Uh, okay. They are Dom uh, Dominicans in Saint Martin, all the other islands. Uh, because I had I, I worked in Saint Lucia, and just mm -hmm. you know, I'd speak in a store in Saint Lucia or in a supermarket, and somebody would say. It sounded like the man on, on DBS leaks. radio. Yeah, Remember, yeah. I went to my internet supermarket and I said, hey, I, I, I'll let you get some fall, you know me and my style, some fall totot. Yeah. That's chicken breast. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what do you feel excited and this, yeah. come up with that? And this girl said, he's something like the man on DBS, on, it was DBS, yeah. it was on, on Radio Dominica. Radio Dominica. Eh? Yeah. 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 DBS Radio, yes. Okay. And DBS, and I said, and a friend of mine, he said, yes, that's him, and she couldn't believe it. You know, in Moshi, in Babunu, all about St. Lucia, mm -hmm. they listen to mm -hmm. Espanol Creole. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Creole, Kokoi, overlays on English. You speak a very deliberate, articulate English as well. You speak a very deliberate, articulate Creole as well. Do you have to work hard at this? No, because you see, I had a good foundation. Of course, many people will tell you otherwise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel you'll tell me, but over the years, I've heard all kinds of things. Okay. Because okay. they hear you in English, not even understand in Creole. They hear you in Creole, not even trying to understand that how can I read a news item in Creole mm -hmm. without understanding English. Exactly. When I came in 77 I had to translate Patrick John's speech. He was the premier at the time. Uh -huh. You know, and take my long week, my okay. whole weekend and, and, and translate his speech into Creole. Mm -hmm. And you know when this guy speak, you know, his long big words and you know. Mm -hmm. But the, the thing is that I love words. Uh, I mean we just flash words like 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 like, like inspiring grand uh -huh. We read books after books. I read a book a day seven books a week, sometimes eight, nine books a week, uh -huh. you know, and so when we, got, we came across a new word, we would just write that down, check our dictionary, come back by the roadside and, and just flash it in style. Mm -hmm. And so I, <laughs> and so I, I had a base in English, yeah. uh, of course I couldn't speak Creole until I was about 17. But that so reminds me of uh, a song the Mighty Sparrow wrote many years ago, half the trouble in the world today is from people who don't know what to say. Yeah, they they, they like to, to use words yeah. that are yeah. big and long, yes, yeah, but and then they have no idea what yes, the meaning yeah. is. May you have you guys have you remember, right. don't like Domino Pavise. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, um, um, we, we would find out the meaning of the word. Okay. Yeah. And then when you get with the like idiosyncrasies, <laughs> you gotta find out all and you yeah, come yeah. and and, and, and <laughs> flash out <of> style. Yeah. <laughs> and the other guys, guys, right. guys like Bonty Liverpool, Eric Douglas, and these guys yes, in Granby. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. Let's let's then ask Mr. Jackson to, to, to bring his special brand of language, idiom, and perception to our conversation? Yeah, well, basically, for me, uh, as a teacher, especially, I'm um, interacting with many young people, which I interact with every day. Basically, language to them has become sort of a contraction. Basically, um, you know, with the internet and the cellular, cellular phones, mm -hmm. guys abbreviate words, you know, and they do not mean the same thing as they meant before. Like, for instance, they see me come to um, school to their cell, well, so you have a sick shoes, I have to know my shoes are looking good. It's not sick, it's, a, it's a, you know, or shorty. So you have to understand those sort of meanings. So okay. I think basically language now 
as opposed to when it was spoken before. It is now has become a staged event almost for tourists and for basic um, for attraction for shows. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, we know during Independence Time, as we are in now, we'll have a lot of staged shows, kokoitori, different activities for the moment. It is being staged. And so, in other words, what was the way of life of the people before is now put on stage, mm -hmm. basically, to be sold and packaged for persons. And that's basically how I see language mm -hmm. is now, basically. Because I think that our young people have been um, overtaken by the, the Jamaican twang, or Jamaican patwa, basically, mm -hmm. and the BC influence of television so forth has all influenced the way we speak, okay. the way we dress, and the way we walk as young people. Yeah, I, I, I believe we probably need to take a little break right yes. now. And because I think we've explored the, the origin, we've explored language as a communications medium. People can talk to each other in Kokoi, in Creole, and, and get communicated, I communicate ideas. But then you've introduced the question of language in entertainment, language in, in, in the arts. Yes. And I'd like to talk about Kokoi and Creole and English in the arts. And then let's, let's begin to explore the possibilities for language being a real national asset. How do we turn it into one of our development platforms, if we can ask that question? So let's take a, a brief break for a word from the sponsors. And when we come back, we'll continue with you, Ian, and ask you to open up this, this, this discussion on Vantage Point as we look at language and this thing we call culture. What is it? Why should we be celebrating it? Why are we celebrating it? So let's take a brief break. Okay, we're back after that short break for a word from the sponsors. And, and we're into what I hope for you, but certainly for us here, is I think a, a very revealing kind of discussion on this aspect of who we are, our culture, our language. Um, and uh, Ian, before the, the break, you were going into this area of how we use language, not yes. just to communicate, yes. but to sort of entertain. entertain. And, and I would say one step removed from that is to earn a living. Yes, on exchange. Let's, 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 be, let's talk yeah, a bit about well, that. Of course, I'm, I'm very pleased that even Felix mentioned the idea about Kadas music. Mm -hmm. And we're right now trying to have a re revitalization of Kadas music. Mm -hmm. Because you cannot differentiate, you cannot um, remove the link between Kadas mm -hmm. and Creole. Okay, and I think that is one of the things that we basically miss over a number of years mm -hmm. uh, in that we could not make that connection between Kadas or music because remember music is a powerful and potent force mm -hmm. and the language carries that music. Um, the same thing happens for instance in reggae music. You find mm -hmm. that even with Dominican artists, say for instance Anasio Fontaine or mm -hmm. any of the guys singing reggae music, they somehow try to copy the Jamaican twang when they speak. Mm -hmm. They are Dominicans but they speak like Jamaicans exactly. because they identify the music as belonging to Jamaica and to be accepted you mm -hmm. have to almost speak in the Jamaican lingua. But I so listen to somebody yeah. like mm -hmm. um, um, Lawrence Brumont right. telling, okay. telling his Creole stories. Yes. He, he speaks what sounds to me like a, a bona fide genuine Creole accent. Yes it is, so, it is. But, but it's not very widespread. Now you don't hear a lot of young people trying to imitate Lawrence Brumont. No, 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 they don't. Um, because what I think, I think there has been, we have never really sold it at school. It was uh -huh. always taboo at school. Okay. I mean, just recently, I mean, they allow it to a certain extent. And if in the CXC exams, you have to put them in inverted commas. So if you say something which is, um, you know, that's not standard English, say standard English, yeah. you have to put it in inverted commas as okay. a part of the expression okay. for the examiner to understand. And remember, we came out from sitting GCE, which was uh -huh. English based, yeah. and we are now having CXC. Uh -huh. So basically, it was never really introduced as part of the formal teaching at school mm -hmm. and so you find that um, persons could not really relate and you have to realize that we're living in society you now where everybody tries to make money out of that society so the, many of the young people now see music and the tool of language as a vehicle to make money and hence persons like Lawrence Ruman now they just see them as traditional persons who come now and then mm -hmm. during the independence time to present their stuff as opposed to having something that they can make money year in year out mm -hmm. and I think that is part of the whole thing because we have a DJ culture now that's you know but certainly you know, Kada's so. music has broken that mold Kada's music has, has, has revealed that it is possible to, to, oh, yes, to yes, use yes. that art form but has that ever happened in the case of Kokoi speakers to, can, can you think, Margaret, of any Kokoi speakers um, and writers who have kind of made it commercially 
using the language of Kokoi as their main means of, of communication? Well, uh, I know Carissa for one. Yeah. He uses it in his calypsos. Mm -hmm. And when we had the... Anthony Gossi. Anthony Gossi. Oh, yes, Gossi. Gossi, yeah. Gossi, oh, yes. yes. Right, right. And when we had the program, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes I would um, read my poems in Kokoi and other people would call in mm -hmm. and read poems in Kokoi. Okay. But um, it's not something, you know, that uh, has been en enhanced since the program stopped. Mm -hmm. It's like we were fighting to get um, sponsors Sponsorship. for the program. Mm -hmm. We didn't get it, so mm -hmm. it just collapsed. And um, I started recording my poems, some of my poems. I have some books. Mm -hmm. I have a books with proverbs only, the, the sayings in Kokoi, mm -hmm. which I hope to publish so, soon, very soon. Okay. And but um, Saint Kitts, Montserrat, and Gwila and Tiga, the, the the their accent, quote unquote, is yeah. just an accent, or is it a version of Kokoi? It's a version of Kokoi, and the accent sometimes is the same. Okay. Similar, I would say. So is that not a market for Kokoi-driven materials? Um, when you say a market... Like if you, your poems, for example. <laughs> not, not, it depends. not quite. It uh, depends, you mm -hmm. know, because, um, because of the fact that people look down on the Kokoi still, mm -hmm. you know? It, because that we, we didn't get the opportunity to push it further. I think there was a barrier at some point in time. Okay. Um, it is surprising that um, Ian said that the guys nowadays, and I notice it too, they are trying to speak like Jamaicans. Uh -huh. And I notice it because these African people that come to sing their songs, everybody is in the office and they're singing these songs. And I'm saying, it's not that the same language I used to speak that you all used to laugh. That's right. You know? That's right. And I tell them, here I am talking to you all and you're not taking on my poems and whatever. And you're all singing this song now, you know? Yeah. So, Car um, carrying their load on somebody yes, else's. Yes, yes, carry yes. load. When yeah. we used to come down and say, may go at the preview or some, so may go nyam or some, so, you know, they would be like laughing. Yeah. What's she saying then, uh, you yeah. know? Yeah. That kind of thing. But um, I believe if we get more exposure, mm -hmm. Kokoi will reach a long way, very far, because mm -hmm. the children now, they don't, the children like, let's say, below 10, I don't think they can speak Kokoi. Kokoi. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is, 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 is the ability, is a multilingual country a setback for the people, for the country, or is it, a, is it a, a, a potential advantage that we just have to know how to, to deal with? For instance, multilingual, you have Kokoi, you have French, Creole, you have English, and if, if, the, if our Kalinago people re resurrect their language, you would have a fourth language. Um, is that a, a, an obstacle or is that a, an advantage? I don't believe it's an obstacle. I believe um, because we have a smaller community mm -hmm. of Kokoi-speaking people, you know the language doesn't spread too okay. far around the country. Felix, let me ask you the same question, for, uh, but uh, this time about Creole. Um, is, is the fact that we are a Creole-speaking country, Creole English and also Cocoa, a problem, a setback, a holdback? I, I wouldn't see it as a problem. I always say uh, we teach children Spanish at schools, mm -hmm. we teach French at schools. It doesn't affect their English, you know, and why should our Creole mm -hmm. affect our English? Mm -hmm. You but know. they teach the, the Spanish, they don't intend the children to speak the Spanish, they just use the Spanish to pass an exam. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about Creole as a living language, Kokoi mm -hmm. as a living language. Can Would, only is that a setback? It can only add to, 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 to you as a people, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I cannot see how it can hurt you. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, as we knew, what, we knew what Lille was trying to do, and I think he succeeded. I think uh, although we had many challenges, but uh, I think we see Creole as being Dominican, okay. you know, that's who we are. And not only the, the language, we have the food, the dress, and all of that. So it, it just adds it to your... Identify us. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. uh, and, and mix your culture, you're just richer. Uh, and w w when you speak Creole, or, or you 
But even as you, you really dress, the Creole wear, mm -hmm. yeah, they do what do yet. Mm -hmm. There's a certain amount of dignity that goes with that and mm -hmm. class, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, so I, I cannot see how. I mean, people try to put it in our minds. They try to brainwash us and make us think that if you try to speak Creole or whatever, it will affect you and blah, blah, blah. You know, how can it affect mm -hmm. you? How can it affect you when it's yours, you know? For example, uh, would, would it be a smart thing to do, and, and, and Ian, I, I want to ask you that, you're a teacher. Would, would it be a smart thing to do to teach the botanical name of plants in English, Kokoi, and Creole? To teach the names of plants, the names of animals, the names of fruit, would 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 that be an advantage for us? It and how do you how, how give me some example? How how could it be an advantage? I, I think the whole Creole culture yes. makes people understand who we are as a people. Mm -hmm. We hear about so many people who are graduating this week, and and more than one speaker saying that hopefully you'll come back to Dominica and help <laughs> build Dominica. What will make you come back like to Dominica? Carolina. What will make you come back except for that love, love of, the country. of country? Mm -hmm. It is that which, you know, keeps you together overseas. I mean, people call on the radio sometimes or people leave it overseas. And uh, when they hear the Creole, when they hear the music and yeah. they, they see the dress, it does something to you. Yeah. It is just different. It, it, it is that which makes you Dominican. But they say it, it takes you to leave the country to appreciate well, the country. Well, yes, too. I've seen that so many a, times. A lot of people. Yes, right? yes. You know. Yeah. Uh, but then that's that thing that holds us together, that keeps us together as a people. I know. But l l let's talk about it because we're seeing language as part of that thing that, that supposedly can help keep us together, identify us who we are. Tiny island, but from the moment you open your mouth, as you gave us that example, um, people should know where you're from, shouldn't they? Yes, that is that a good thing? It's a good thing. So how do we thing. build on that good it's thing? It's a great thing, and it must start at the schools. We mm -hmm. must start at the schools. And um, some years ago, I think we had um, that young man, Jaranza. I think uh, he was trying to um, put a program together at the youth division mm -hmm. as part of the school. It started okay at the at, at the SMA. I know we had it at the SMA. In the first forms, we started in the first form, but somehow it, it fell apart. I think Jawanza went to study. He's back now. Mm -hmm. And um, that was part of the program to introduce the Creole in the schools. I think there's also a dictionary that you all did, and so we also tried to introduce that. Yeah, we've done so dictionary, much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so many mm. years yeah. ago, we did a study, yeah. we did a study on, on, on Creole in the schools. Mm -hmm. We made so many um, mm -hmm. proposals, but they just fell along the way. And that's what's lacking. Maybe the, the wheel. Look at St. Lucia. St. Lucia's Pullet Louise, that's a, she's the Governor General of St. Lucia. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But before that, she was the first chairman of the Creole Committee in St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. Pullet and I worked together many, many times, many conferences and meetings, organizing the Creole language, the Creole orthography together, if linguists, of course, from other countries. Okay. So and so, you know, because she's the Governor General, when she gives a throne speech, she gives a portion in Creole. Okay. I have a copy of her speech, which I'll read on the radio shortly, mm -hmm. you know. But, uh, you know, and so it's a, like a, it's an official language in St. Lucia now. Yeah. And so, but we haven't reached that stage. Okay. We just accept just an oral tradition in Dominica. Although we've written some books, I've written a couple of booklets myself, and the dictionary we wrote and stuff like that. We've done a few publications, mm -hmm. uh, proverbs, and all of that. But I think we need to go further than that. How do I we? I think we need to go further than Creole, not just. Uh, you know what I say? You ever see a cat play with a battery on a nice new carpet? A cat playing with an old battery on the floor. Uh -huh. Maybe you know, uh, I, I, I can see it, like like I, I, at my mother's home, growing up as a child, or a little two-room house in the legal sala. You know, and the cat playing with the battery and pushing it. And where the battery goes, the cat just plays with the battery. Yeah. You know, and that's how we play. That's, that's, that's what we do with Creole. So we're playing we with play Creole. the language. Okay. We're using the language, okay. but we're so not going further. So you uh, so, so I think we can do you, much more. I'm asking all three of you, and, and the, the, this this next question. What must we do to stop playing with language and, and let language become an important part of who we are, our legacy, our identity? How, how do we make that happen? Is it just going to be the passage of time or are there some deliberate things we need to do to make that happen? Okay, there are things we need to do. For instance, um, in Jamaica, I know at one time Jamaica had the same problem until people like Louis ben and Bennett came on the scene and so on. Okay. And on the Gleaner newspaper, they actually allowed areas on the Gleaner um, newspaper for expression in their Jamaica patois. Mm -hmm. okay? Now, the formal 
organizations and mediums that we have in Dominica, first of all, have to accept the language. I mean, the Speaker of the House is always making mention about acceptance of the language. So in our formal groups and settings, mm -hmm. such as the House of Assembly, at various meetings, be it Kokoy or whatever, Edison mm -hmm. James would speak Kokoy or whatever, and it's okay in the House, you know, because it's a form of communication. Mm -hmm. So if we have a slot on the papers, we have programs on the television and so forth, just the same thing that happened right now with Kadas Music right now, it's in a high for that short moment because of the RCCU. Yes. It has been infused and the same thing can happen if we use our formal areas. Because what happens is that our young people don't see that as anything formal. They don't see that it's something they can get a certificate from. Mm -hmm. They don't need for a job and whatever. But if they realize that this guy has all his education, he has his BSc, he has his MA and whatever, and he speaks Creole comfortably in anywhere mm -hmm. or he speaks Cocoa anywhere, they too can now identify that. So it's a yeah. process. Okay. Yeah. They, they call, that, that's a very interesting formula and, and uh, would that work for Kokoi? With the Kokoi, I believe we need a lot of exposure. We need to promote the Kokoi more mm -hmm. because um, as I said before, most people consider it bad English. We used to get a lot of challenges after the program. Mm -hmm. What bad English are you attack Pan Radio Day? You know, like forget that. I remember on Heritage Day, I read the scripture. In that sounds so beautiful. Kokoi. You know, I mean, just, it, 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 it's musical. Actually, it's, could you say that again? <laughs> what bad English are you talking about, Pan Radio Day? You know, after yeah. Heritage Day, I, I read, the, on Heritage Day, I mean, during yeah. the service, I read the scripture in Kokoi. Yeah. And when I was through, a lady came to me and she said, what make are you good, um, go up and pulpit and talk, and, and talk, Coco in a Papa God house. So I told her, we Papa God, they understand our language. Papa <laughs> 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 God created language. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, right. So, Bibel? Yes. 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 So I, some of them are ashamed. Yes. yes. Some of them want to promote it. But we get very little encouragement to mm -hmm. continue. And do you know, the Monday after the Heritage Day, when I reached work, there was a man standing at the door. And as soon as I stepped in, he said, Are you Margaret James? I just came to see who read that scripture who in, in Kokoi, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I always feel pleased to to say my poems in public and whenever they call on me, but um, okay. besides that, we need a lot more exposure. A lot to more exposure. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's take our, our, our next break, and when we come back, let's, let's pick up where you have just brought us to, Margaret. I want to ask us to, to, to think ahead, the legacy. Are there any countries or societies that we know where that is actually the case, where language has become an active part of the legacy? Let's take a short break. We'll be right back after this word from the sponsors. Okay, welcome back, and welcome back after this break from the sponsors, for the for word from the sponsors. And we're at a stage you now where, for me, probably more, the more even, even more exciting than the very exciting discussions we've already had, which is I'm asking our guests, Ian, Felix, and Margaret, to, to look ahead. Um, how do we ensure that we leave a really joyful, proud, you know, legacy that, that the next couple generations of Dominicans will o want to be Kokoi speakers, even if they didn't come from Maragot, want to speak Creole, want to be multilingual, because the legacy we could f leave a foundation on suggests that this is, this is what the Dominica of the 21st century is about. Do you see that as a dream idea, or do you see that as something we could work towards, Margaret? I see it as something as I could I could work towards because mm. I always I have written close to a hundred poems mm -hmm. in Kokoi. Wow. And I tell my children every day, maybe I might not live to see it, but I know one day my books will be used as literature there you go. in schools. Because um, when I look at Louis Bennett, mm -hmm. that encouraged me to write more and more. As a storyteller lady from yes. Jamaica. Yes. Yeah, right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, sometimes I would go to church almost every Sunday, and at night I couldn't sleep. I would have to just get up and write that poem in Kokoi, because when I used to go to church, they wouldn't ask for a poem, they would ask for a fatem. What is that? The, the, the po the in Kokoi, po 
is slim. Uh-huh. And so instead of asking oh. for a poem, <laughs> he would ask, they would ask for a uh, fatem. fatem. Okay. So yeah. I would make sure that I would have a a, a, a fatem for them. All you right. Know? All right. And uh, you know that encouraged me to write a lot. Wonderful. And anything at work, any little thing would happen, mm. I would uh, write in Kokoi, write poems, and my colleagues at work, mm -hmm. they would always appreciate what I write. My children, the village, some of the villagers. Mm -hmm. You know, so I would just keep on writing and writing and writing in Kokoi. And I really want to um, publish my book, but we haven't got a standard for the Kokoi yet. Dr. Irish came yeah. from St. Kitts. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Carrington, Lawrence Carrington, he used to help us. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are professors who came, uh, for instance, Michael Asito. Mm -hmm. He was doing his thesis on um, Kokoi. He came here. And a couple others came. But you've just pressed a very important and interesting button. Are there any Dominican researchers, students, doing work on the Kokoi language and helping to, you know, get it to the stage and standard where your your work now gets published? You Not know, that against I know. those standards. No. Nobody. Besides, um, mm -hmm. I know Greg sings in Kokoi, I write poems. Mr. Arnold Telemark, mm -hmm. he Voicing. writes mm -hmm. in Kokoi, he sings in Kokoi, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, some students with, um, that are doing their thesis mm -hmm. in Martinique, yes. their parents came from, they have a um, Dominican background, mm -hmm. so they come to me okay. to get some help, you know, about right. the, mm -hmm. to know more about the Kokoi language. Okay. But besides that, you know, it's not exposed enough. Even mm -hmm. on, on Quayol Day, Marugo is supposed to speak. Kokoi. The Kokoi community is supposed to speak Kokoi. Mm -hmm. But no. um, we hardly hear it. Okay. I know sometimes on, on Quayol Day, they would allow us to come in, you know, for just a few minutes on the radio to say something. But it's been a while. That it's sounds while. like it's really, you know, quite insufficient. Mm -hmm. 34 years of in of, uh, as an independent country, but much more than that as a identifiable place and cultural space. Suggest to me, Felix, that we could have and maybe should have and maybe need to do more to ensure that the legacy that we leave ensures that the language is safe, the language you know, becomes a powerful medium through which we can communicate not just to ourselves, but to others. Do you see that as I think possible? We, yeah, I think um, that's what we're working towards. Let's not forget that we've done a lot of work in Creole. Right. We have an orthography, a writing system. We've, I mean, we've taken off Creole when peop, uh, from the place that people used to, as I say, kick it around. Mm -hmm. You know, Creole used to walk on its knees, and now Creole is walking. You know, okay. and so we've gone past that. You know, there are people who speak Creole in Seychelles, in Haiti, in Martinique, Guadeloupe, St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. I was just in St. Lucia recent, um, some time ago, there, um, a few months ago, and we did a textbook for writing Creole for Pisco volunteers. So even the Pisco realizes, recognizes that it's a very important tool um, for their volunteers in Dominica because you need the Creole to communicate with people that you work with. Mm -hmm. And so we've written books, booklets, um, well, books, and it's not totally an oral tradition and that's what we're working yeah. towards i think the challenge now is mm -hmm. is to get people our people to read and write creole mm -hmm. you know because what we really want to see as you said is to deposit in fact our first booklet had a picture of somebody an older person depositing a basket written with creole in it yeah. to the next generation yeah. uh, this yeah. is what we want to do yeah. to present the creole yeah. unspoiled to the next generation, mm -hmm. because if you do not um, write your language, just remains an oral tradition. Mm -hmm. After a while, you lo you lose it, it. Look at the Caribs. It disappears. You know, it yes. disappears. Mm -hmm. You know. I think we've done a lot of work. The challenge now is to go a little higher, mm -hmm. bring it to the school, not just on Creole for around that time. Now, everybody comes to me, Felix. I want a few words. I want mm -hmm. something. Give me something for for Creole for Creole. Yeah. Uh -huh. I have to write uh, read something in church. Yeah. Blah, blah 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 blah. Fine, that's nice. That's good. But let's do it for mm -hmm. the year. Yeah. Let's have it in Parliament too, like Saint Lucia. Let's go a little further. Mm -hmm. Let's have a little course. Even for, 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 for in college. Mm -hmm. Why not in college? Absolutely. You know, and so this is what I will keep our Creole. I think our Creole is in safe hands now, but we got to, to make sure. Mm -hmm. We got to be assured that the next generation has no problem mm -hmm. 
accepting our Creole and, 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 and reads time. I mean, I teach people Creole for years, the Pisco volunteers, and I can, I, I can teach you to write Creole in less than 30 minutes. I'm telling you, in, in less than 30 minutes, but there's, nobody wants to. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no school, nothing happening, and uh, it's very easy. Very, very easy. Have you tried to teach people here? And they, they, well, there's we, no I, I've done it on the radio. Oh, yes, yeah. people did very well. When I used to do experience okay. well before, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, help people who wanted to. But okay. And this, there was a group, I, I don't remember this, before, uh, he was one of them, Jaya, what's Jaya his name? Jaya yes, Jaya yes. And I, I taught them. The, the program they went around with, I taught them, and so they could okay. go and teach, right. you know. And okay. so we done a lot of work, but I think we need to go further than that so we can deposit it safely in yeah. the hands of the next generation. English. English. People go to school for all these years, they get taught English by teachers like Ian Jackson, <laughs> and they come out and they speak something that you really have to use your imagination to determine what it is, is it? Yeah, because... Is, 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 is English as a communicating language with most of the world now safe? Is English in good hands? Is oh, well, English, we do have a problem with English because it's been set by the will as a standard, as a standard language, a standard bearer for all languages. However, um, we are concerned about our own local expressions. As a matter of fact, for us in Dominica, English is a foreign language because at school, that's why students get a lot of problems with English at yeah. CX level because yeah. for them, how they speak in their community is not the same way they are requested to write it and present it for examinations. Mm -hmm. You know, so in terms of the future of Creole language and our own language as Kokoi and whatever, as Dominicans, I really think that it has to start with education and exchanges, exchanges. Mm -hmm. We had a very good French program in SMA at certain time that every year mm -hmm. a contingent of 20 students used to go across to Guadeloupe or Martinic and the same used to happen, vice versa. Mm -hmm. We need to have more of those things happening, even if you're Kokoi. Mm -hmm. And for instance, some people can go for, to Antigua and exchange come here mm -hmm. and the idea of having boats and so forth, the boats come in and go in and so on and exchanges, mm -hmm. I think that is the way. And our greatest hope really lies in the re revitalization of Kadas music because even though we cannot understand what people are saying, remember music is an international language mm -hmm. and people will be forced to understand what is being said mm -hmm. if they can appreciate the music. So I think our way out with the Creole language especially is through music and Kadas. One thing though, you keep saying the schools Ian. Oh yes, but, yes. But are there teachers in the schools who can do that? Oh yes, we you have teachers in school. Deal with Creole, deal mm -hmm. with Kokoi. Yeah, we have oh. teachers, and of course, we can always ask for resource persons like Felix <laughs> to come Felix. in. Felix, yes, Felix <laughs> to come in, and we have we have, for instance, in um, SME and uh, I know a number of schools. They have most of the teachers who can speak French. Mm -hmm. They are also good Creole speakers, you know. Okay. But um, they have to speak the formal French and so on at the schools. But mm -hmm. we we have people who can do that. We have the resources around us. The yes. depositors and the, the, the safeguards and the stewards of language have often been the elders of our community, of any community. They are the, the ones who grew up using it and, and they are the ones who appreciated its value because it was what they knew. Our elders are still with us in many, many cases. Uh, do they see themselves as stewards of Kokoi, of Creole, you know? Creole, who, who, besides yourself and people like yourself who are professionally engaged, would you say that, can you list six people over 80 who are part of that movement to preserve the language, Creole? Well, not over 80, but there are quite a few people working in the development of Creole in Dominica. People mm -hmm. like Gregory Rabes, mm -hmm. you know, of course, you remember Marcel Fontaine who mm -hmm. died some time ago. Sure. Uh, there are many other people, even Ophelia on the committee and, and, and Delia Wicks and people like that. Mm -hmm. our, our, our Creole speaking Dominica is, you know, is very strong, okay. you know. I mean, not only pockets like, 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 like Point Michel, Vicas, but all around Dominica, okay. except of course for Maricot, we know their history, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's very strong. So there are many people who work in, uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, but I think what, what needs to be done is uh, maybe a coordinated approach, you know. What happened with Creole in the 80s, we did a lot of work. Uh, we set some goals and we accomplished those goals. Okay. We have Creole Day, we started Creole Day. Okay. It's now established. But there are new things to be done now. There are new things to be done, new okay. challenge. Okay. We need to challenge ourselves further. Okay. You know, we did a lot of work and we just satisfied what we did. Mm -hmm. And I, I think there's lots more to be done. Okay. And, uh, you know. Would the same apply to Kokoi, Margaret? You know, a yes, champion and so. some new um, things to I be done? I remember yes? some years back, um, Felix, mm -hmm. yes. Felix mentioned to me that we should have a Kokoi day. Right. And I think that would enhance the language, you right. know. 
Let's take our last. We try quickly. We try to to help the Creole committee. Try to work with your committee. We've mm -hmm. with Marigold some years ago. We did some work with Marigold right. to revitalize. Okay. On that note, let's take our final break and 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 let the sponsors have their say. This has been fascinating. It's clearly the kind of conversation we probably need a little more time for, but. Um, I think we have, we have begun to explore it sufficiently to interest people in language as part of the culture. We'll take a final break and we'll be right back. Forward. Bye bye. Okay, we're back, and this is where we you know, sadly have to let you know that we're almost to the end of the program, and we, we give over to the guests to sort of share with you their final thoughts on the conversations that we've been having. Margaret? Yeah, I'd like to say, um, Margot Nega, Wesley Nega, the people there at Clifton, Mr. Wallace, I forgot to call his name. Yeah, I'm a big Kokoi fan. And all them Nega out there, we really like the Kokoi to put a well, little something in that, a little pepper, a little salt, to keep the language pan stream. And we need to tag the kokoi more and more, let our children learn them. Because, you know something, my mother was from Grand Bay. Mm -hmm. She spoke the patois to us all the time. The Marigo people could not understand the patois. So when the Marigo people were wrong, she would speak the patois to us and we would understand and do what she say. Now, there was a battle in the house between not speaking Patwa and not speaking Kokoi. But um, when we realize now the importance of the Kokoi language. It is a language. Yeah. So we need to do something about the language. And I'm asking the people out there who are really interested in the Kokoi language, let's boost it up. Let's yeah. keep on speaking our language. Mm -hmm. It's from our gut. This is what our grandparents or ancestors spoke, mm -hmm. you know. I have a lot of sayings, you know, that I collected over the years and I am pleased to sometimes just read them and laugh. Wonderful. You know, there are a lot of stories, Anansi stories, you know, that, you, that have died. And if we could, I'm planning to write a book with those stories, but time is beyond me. But someday I find, I, I hope I can find the time to really sit and write all those stories. I have them on audio. But I want to really write them in Kokoi, and I am, I would be very much interested in getting somebody to help me, a linguist. There's a, a linguist, Kate, in Matnik. She comes off and on, but she comes to get from me. Okay. And most people don't want to give her, they send her to me. Okay. All right, well, I'm pretty sure that all of these things, and I'm glad to see that you're thinking ahead, you've thought ahead, that, that you have to do to keep your language alive. Thank you so much. Felix, your final thoughts. Final thoughts. Magadina Creole, Nati Welma. Nati Welma. Ano Pali Creola. Ano Kiti Kultukuela, Viva Tujo. Ano Chenli, Ano Shufeya. Si yo bom, Creola, si komo bom maje, i wish, i fo, i ni bongu. I ka bui, ano Chenli ka bui a su difeya. Sa se lagaj la ki kom mama nu pali, asye nu pali. Sa se lagaj la ki yo, mama nu e papa nu voyo, ashe kwe di an danye. Language là qui papa nous parler puis maman nous um, pour y revenir ensemble avec pour crier de nous <laughs> <laughs> ça c'est langage là yo servi pour tout bitin ah, oui. langage là yo était fâché les vieux yo était taché elle yo était les coaché ça mm. c'est langage nous qui on là il y a lui dans nous lui dans beau yo nous comme ça à nous parler pour ces mots là qui ça fait une différence ça à nous mener plus haut à nous mener à parler à main à nous mener à c'est l'école là pour ces mots là qui passe à parler en qui passe à parler fait il faut pour parler maman et papa mouche les enfants ou parler qui on là ces mots là qui ca aller l'université ces jeunes mots là qui aller collège essayer écrire qui on là puis signer une structure une manière pour écrire qui on là avec soleil ou qui t'a payé Okay. Anu chen li vivan pou depose ye an la melod generasyon i pi dignite. Mesi apil. Nafta nou na. Mesi. Ian, the final final. Yeah, I'd like to end final final for a quotation from our first Rex Nettleford. Okay. And he says that language is an index of power and identity. If we think our language is unworthy, we think ourselves unworthy. And he also goes on to say, don't come with that nonsense about choosing patois over English or whether we have to learn English over patois. 
we need both of them. We are living in a multicultural society and it tells of our life, our history and our culture. Absolutely. On that note, I want to thank the three of you, you know, powerful stuff, you know, very revealing and insightful. And, and I'm glad we had a chance to explore the real meaning of language in the context of culture because that's part of the legacy we really are going to have to work really hard to leave to the next few generations of Dominicans. On that note, I want to say thank you for listening, thank you for watching, and um, again, Ian, Felix, and Margaret, a hundred thanks to you from Vantage Point. We'll see you guys next program. So hopefully as interesting and exciting as this one has been for all of us. Good evening. Good afternoon. <laughs>